Welcome to our beginning end of the bomb talk story series. Uh, my name is Jose Barzola from the Mountain Alliance Super Peace at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Our talk story today will focus on peace education in Nagasaki with Aoi Osajima and Sunao Takami. Today's event will be live streamed on our community Facebook pages through the 100 Infantry Battalion Veterans Education Center, aka Club 100, K2A Honolulu, and the Spark and Mountain Alliance Super Peace and Conflict Resolution. Thank you for joining us today to learn about the Peace Caravan Thai and the Nagasaki Youth Delegation, uh, a group of volunteer students from Nagasaki University who provide peace education to youth and the lessons learned from it. Uh, I'm going to start today's event by introducing our guests. Aoi Osajima and Sunao Takami are students at Nagasaki University. Before living in Nagasaki, they had lived in other prefectures in Japan and only had a little basic peace education at school. However, since uh, arriving in Nagasaki, they've learned a lot about the history of the atomic bombing uh, of Hiroshima and Nagasaki that have led them to learn further about peace education. They now provide peace education as part of the Peace Caravan Thai and Nagasaki Youth Delegation in Nagasaki. Also joining us today is Saki Nag Nagai, who graduated from Nagasaki University, where she got the opportunity to study and work in peace activities She's a previous member of both the Nagasaki Youth Delegation and the Peace Caravan Thai. Saki was also an intern here at the Pearl Harbor National Memorial and wrote her dissertation on the comparison of the Museum of Pearl Harbor National Memorial and the Nagasaki Atomic Bomb Museum. She will be available today for any assistance with translation. Uh, and to get us started, I'm going to turn it over to Sunao. Okay, thank you. First, I want to share the screen. <clears throat> Can you see? Okay. Okay. So, hello everyone. And um, I we are going to talk about peace education in Nagasaki from this time. And thank you for coming and taking. Thank you for taking your time for this. So, uh, this is today's outline for our presentation. And first of all, we want to introduce ourselves and things about us and oh, and after that we are going to talk about the history of Peace Caravan Thai which is a group that we are working on for providing peace education and also we want to do some parts of the peace, peace education that we are actually providing as a group and as the final part of the presentation we want to talk about the struggles and future visions that we have as a group. So first of all, let me introduce ourselves uh, from Aoi, please. Hey, hello. My name is Aoi Osajima, and I'm a student from Nagasaki University. And now I study about environmental issues as my major in the Faculty of Environmental Science. OK, thank you. And my name is Nao Takami. I am also a student at Nagasaki University and in the faculty, which is School of Global Humanities and Social Sciences. And now I am measuring on international political science. So uh, Aoi and I are here now, are here in Nagasaki, Japan, which is pretty south part of Japan, as you can see in the left sided map. And also we have a pretty uh, beautiful ocean views in the city, which is a very good, one of the good points to live in Nagasaki. And uh, today we are here as a member of a group which is called Peace Carbon Thai, and is, it's a student group and we deliver the new style of peace education. And uh, let me talk about the the meaning of peace caravan Thai, the phrase itself. And first of all, the first two words, peace caravan, means our activities themselves, and which is providing peace education for people or mainly for children. And the last word, Thai, is actually it's a Japanese and it means group in English. So in the whole sentence, peace caravan Thai means a group about us and but we when we cut out that just the two words peace cabin it means our activities providing peace education and also uh, Aoi and I have the experience as we worked 
as another kind of group for uh, related to peace from Nagasaki, which is called Peace uh, Nagasaki Youth Delegation. And it's composed with young people in Nagasaki. And we, uh, as we uh, worked as an official young peace messenger from Nagasaki. And once we uh, selected as the member of the delegation, we uh, promised to attend to the NPD conference. And so we, Aoi and I couldn't make it because it was postponed in the spring. It, it was planning, it was planned to be held in New York in the United States this spring. And, but we have been uh, figuring out some, our original or our own way, uh, our own ways to approach the abolition of nuclear weapons in the derogation. So uh, from here, I, we want to talk about why we started this piece related activities and in the first place. So from Aoi, please. Okay. Uh, when I was in elementary school, I learned about the new, learned about the atomic bombings for the first time. And I felt it was very scary and everyone needed to learn at that time. However, I gradually forget about about it while I was in junior high school in high school. Um, after that, I came to Nagasaki for university and I was shocked to find myself forgetting about that. And I was heard the si siren to pray for the victims on Nagasaki atomic bomb day. So I decided to study more about nuclear issues and studied to join the Peace Karabantai to teach for children. So next, uh, the reason that I studied these kinds of activities is that I was originally interested in international society. I loved studying English. I always uh, was obsessed with uh, going to the another country outside of Japan. And so just some international issues was well, one of the things that I was very interested in. And also I live I lived before coming to Nagasaki, I lived in another prefecture which is uh, pretty far away from Nagasaki and had a very different style and a very different content of peace education from that one in Nagasaki or in Hiroshima. So when I came to Nagasaki and learned the facts of his peace education in Nagasaki, I was kind of shocked at that fact in a good way. And I thought I wanted to learn about this more. And I also, I have the experience that I evacuated from my hometown when the Fukushima accident happened in 2011. And the fear that I felt at that moment was, was would, would be said as inexplainable. And also I came to Nagasaki and learned about I had opportunities to listen to Hibakusha's voice and I learned about some of the uh, the current situation with nuclear weapons and I thought maybe I could do something with the feeling that I felt in, in a real way and the, uh, the, fut the future that we are going to have with or without nuclear weapons as the human beings. So I studied these activities. And from now on, Aoi is going to talk about the history of Peace Kevantai. Okay. Next, please. As since 2016, we have delivered lectures called Peace Kalaban all over Japan and a few places of overseas. The total number of time is 67 and delivered for 8,000 people. Okay, next, let me tell you the background behind the establishment of the Peace Caravan Project. A Peace Caravan Project is launched by certain Nagasaki Youth Delegation members. Nagasaki Youth Delegation is the group that's now explained at the beginning. 
Uh, the members the members did the survey aimed to aim at Nagasaki University students in 2015. According to the survey, they found the reality of peace education. When they asked the question, have you ever taken the peace education? All students from Nagasaki said yes, and 90% of students from other regions said yes. And for next question, are you satisfied with the peace education? 90% of students from Nagasaki and 82% of from other other measures, uh, no, other regions said yes. So most students has learned about peace and they have been satisfied with it. However, about 75% of students think that there is no possibility of abolition of nuclear weapons. The many people didn't have hope for the world without nuclear weapons. Moreover, only about 30% students know the number of nuclear weapons exist in this world. And the number of students who know the nuclear possessing countries is only 10%. Um, what I'm trying to say is most students have learned about peace and they have been satisfied with it, but they don't have hope for abolition of nuclear weapons and they don't know the current situation. The survey shows that the previous peace education were less focused on the current situation. However, with the fact that we are facing the era that there are no hibaksha in near future, we found it more important to give them information about what is happening in the current nuclear weapon situation. Because we believe that it will matter to us sooner or later. Okay, this is the new style of peace education. We have already learned about past and it's very important. However, we have to learn about the contents of current and future because we live in, in this time, we found the possibility of providing new style of peace education. So early members of us launched this, pro this project. And there are four features of our peace caravan. First, conducted by students include university and graduated students. We have several background and close age to the participant. Second, made to order lectures. We change the contents depend on the student's age, number, and the time of lecture. Third, including discussion. We make chance not only to input information, but also output ideas. And lastly, as I told before, focusing on current situation of nuclear weapons. And there are three purposes of our peace caravan. Uh, first, yellow part, to increase consciousness for society. Our lecture will help students to think about society. And next, orange part, encouraged to have own ideas and opinion. In Japan, students tend not to say much much of our one's opinion. So so that so this is important purpose, I think. And pink part uh, to make as their own issues. We want students to realize that social issues are related to our daily lives. And these three are the goals of our lectures. Next, uh, this is an example of our lectures outline. First, for the past part, we explain about the situation of atomic bombing in Nagasaki with showing some pictures. And also we always talk about nuclear testing to make sure that there are hibaksha in other countries. 
And next part is current situation of nuclear weapons. In this section, we do some simulation called BB blood simulations and ground zero simulation to make easy to imagine the situation. We will show you this simulation later. And last is future section. Instead of pushing our ideas, we try to make it possible for children to have their own thoughts and opinion in discussion time. Uh, let me show you the part of our lectures. We will do the BV blood simulation and ground zero simulation. Okay, first BV blood simulation. Uh, in this simulation, we will use a small ball called BB blood to represent one nuclear weapon. In this world, there are uh, 13,410 nuclear weapons. It is easy to say the number, but it's really hard to feel or imagine. So we use this simulation to fill them with sound. First of all, we ask the audience to close their eyes. And then we ask the audience to imagine the people or things they care about. And we show three pictures to remind you the atomic, remind you the atomic bombings in 1945. This is mushroom, mushroom crowd at Nagasaki. And this is Nagasaki city after the atomic bombing. And this is Hiroshima atomic bombings. Um, after these pictures, we always show some kind of sh shocking photo, like a boy who was dead with the bomb. The, the bomb just burned a lot of people and their precious things. Uh, we want we want Odi uh, we want Odian to remind the people in 1945 also had important things or people who care about. And next, again, we ask the audience to close their eyes. And from now on. We will show you this video to listen to actual sounds. As I said at the beginning, one baby blood represent one nuclear weapon. So now, please close your eyes again and listen. On August 6, 1945, at 8.15 a.m. in Hiroshima, for the first time ever, the atomic bomb was dropped on the human being. On August 9, 1945, at 11.02 a.m. in Nagasaki, the second atomic bomb was dropped. And nuclear weapons in the current world. Close your eyes again. What did you feel? I want you to remember what you feel, what what you felt just now. 
in our lectures, we set the time to share the feelings after the simulation. Many students said that the sound was so long and so scary, or I realized that there were a lot of nuclear weapons in this world. So this is very impressive simulation for children. Next, we will show you the ground zero simulation. In this simulation, you can see the power of nuclear weapons. We used a website called Ground Zero, so you can also check this on your own. First, next please. First, uh, this is a simulation. If the fat man, the Nagasaki atomic bomb is dropped on our Nagasaki University. Usually we pick the place where the where our lectures is held. This circle shows the extent of the damage. And the more you go to the center, the greater the damage. The black part means instant death, and purple means severe burns. And orange means uh, blisters and pain, like burns by boiling water. And yellow means skin redness. And next, this is a simulation of a fat man dropped in Nagasaki compared to the world largest hydrogen bomb that ever made, Tsari Bomba. Then I would like to show both map from afar. As you can see in this map, very wide range will get serious damage. From this simulation, we can see that the power of nuclear weapons explosion could be much greater than the drop on Nagasaki. In addition, the effect of radiation are thought to be wider. Um, this is the simulation of one nuclear weapons explosion, but in case of nuclear war where multiple nuclear weapons would be used, people could get more damage. Okay, uh, generally, there are two different, different opinions of their feedbacks. And for that, I agree with nuclear weapons. They say, uh, we believe it keeps the balance of international relations. And even, or even if nuclear weapons are gone, the next weapons will be born. And it gives the good relationships with us and so on and on the other on the other hand there are people who say no need nuclear weapons they say no more hibakusha uh, no, no more hiroshima and nagasaki and uh, nuclear weapons might take many of our lives in the future and so on um, they give us various opinions. We want to abolish nuclear weapons, but in order to do that, I think we need to get many people to have an, op to have an opinion on the nuclear issues first. So I'm happy that children have a lot of opinions after our lectures. Next, uh, so now we'll talk about struggle and future visions. <laughs> okay. And as the final part of our presentation, I want to talk about the struggles and future visions that we have as a group, Peace, Kevin Time. So for struggles first, uh, we always try to figure out the best way to teach something children because we, the people in the Peace, Kevin Time, are not the specialists about providing education for children. So 
for example, like when we have the certain reaction from children about our lecture, we sometimes don't know the best way to react them. Like, should should we smile or should we have the serious expression on face or something like that? So we sometimes get confused with facing those scenes through providing lectures for children. So it's a very trial and, and error. We, we have some like experience on providing education in the real way and try to make it better at the next time. And, <clears throat> and we also uh, try to, uh, we also have tried to figure out the best, mm, the best way to talk about the perpetrator size of war or the history in the past. Um, and we know that people could have different perspectives and there could be different explanations also. But, um, and as a peace Kiabantai, we want to uh, stand on the neutral position as much as possible because we want to give uh, various perspectives or various information for children and they, and so that they can have their own opinion by being the, building up their own opinion uh, through uh, thinking through the various perspectives in this world. And so it means that we don't want to talk about, we don't, we don't only want to talk about the one sided, like that we are taken, that we got damaged from those history or something. But also we want to talk about what we did to some people. So it's also the one of the points that we are uh, figuring out still. And for future visions, uh, currently we are working on making peace education video um, because in this COVID-19 situation, we couldn't go to the any school to teach some peace education stuff for children. And so we needed to come up with the another like alternative idea to provide peace education for people. So we came up with the idea making video and so that teachers at schools or some adults can might be able to use it as their as part of their peace education or in their class time too. So we're still working on it very hard. And also we are planning to make it with, not only with Japanese, but also with another languages and which we are considering with English and Chinese now. And we also take this very important thing because uh, we take the issues or the problems with nuclear weapons, not as the certain regions or certain people's problem, but as the universe problems. This is the problem for related to all the human beings. So not uh, making it only in Japanese is not so effective, we think. So we try to make it with multiple languages like English and Chinese so that uh, more people can exchange their opinion or thoughts about nuclear weapons, uh, issues with nuclear weapons, and we might be able to move forward together for the abolition of nuclear weapons. And this is actually the end of our presentation, but uh, lastly, we want to talk, I want to talk about the, the, the Treaty for the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, which we recently got 50 ratification country and is going to be entered into forces in 1990 days. And as also in Nagasaki, there were some, there were a lot of people who were celebrating for that day, that historical day and event. And I also felt that the international treaty is being built up by actual people, alive people. And those voices can build up the uh, the the actual rule uh, to make something to to ban something like legally, and 
So I re realized that fact through these days, getting 50 certif certification, no ratification on the treaty. So we, as a Peace Care Bantai, we also uh, want to keep providing education, peace education for children and like create future as alive human beings on this planet. So this is all for our presentation today. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you very much. Well, I just got to say, uh, great work with everything you're doing. Thank you so much. Um, let me just uh, video wise. Here we go. Okay. Um, I, yeah, I, I think uh, definitely getting videos in different languages is a wonderful initiative to try to try to bridge those barriers, language barriers with other communities, other countries. Um, so uh, I just want to say definitely arigato gozaimasu uh, to Aoi Sunao for sharing your story today for us all to learn more about your experience with peace builders. I just want to thank you for your spirit to educate yourself and those in your communities further about the need for a peaceful future. So arigato gozaimasu. Uh, also arigato gozaimasu to Saki for all your assistance in making today's event a reality. Uh, it's great to see a lot of familiar faces again. Uh, finally, thank you to all of you for joining us today's event. Uh, we deeply appreciate your interest and support in joining us to learn about uh, our beginning end of the bomb talk story series.